Alan, let's just talk about this number. It seems to be a little bit higher than what analysts had expected. Yeah, I think the consensus was about 11.5%. Our personal view is that it would come out much higher than that. Um, our forecast was based on the idea that you'd have about 100 basis points um, per 25% increase in the price of fuel. So we had a 50% increase. We factored in about 200 basis points from that. And then you add regular inflation on top of that. So I think it's very easy to get to the 3.4% month on month that we got. So I think we were saying 12.4 higher than consensus. But I think now we have a lot more clarity on where inflation will go this year. When, moving forward, though, when we come to perhaps looking at this number again in the, at the next reading, do you mm -hmm. think the numbers are going to be better, particularly looking at that, those fuel subsidies now and the government probably retracting on what they'd planned to do? Um, well, I think we've had the major shift in terms of month-on-month -month inflation. It certainly won't be as high as 3.4% in the coming months, but I think what you'll see in the year-on-year -year readings, uh, now that we've had this jump in month-on-month -month readings, is that they will be substantially higher. Um, our forecast is for average inflation of about 12.8%, 12.9% throughout the course of this year, and that'll probably get to a seasonal peak of just a shade under 14% in July or August. So. Um, yeah, the year-on-year -year readings will be similar or above to, to what we've had now. Um, the month-on-month -month readings will be substantially less. The Nigerian Central Bank seems to want to target a single-digit inflation number. Do you think that that's realistic? Mm -hmm. Not this year, no. Um, I think it has affected a lot of tightening and that's been very positive for inflation. And you saw that um, by, by December, the figures were getting very close to the single digit target. But uh, I think that that target for them now has turned into more of a, a two to three year target as opposed to an immediate term target, realizing that the impact of you know, rising fuel prices is going to be apparent throughout the rest of this year. Other than that, Alan, it seems as though a lot of what's happening around the world impacting on the Nigerian economy. We've seen it here in South Africa and it's happening in Nigeria. And some of the comment mm -hmm. that has come out is that that makes it quite difficult for the central bank to loosen monetary policy. Going forward, do you think that they could be, could be thinking that they could tweak that a little or do you think that they'll probably be, continue to be quite stringent until the global economy looks a little better? Um, well, I think for them the question is not so much the global economy as it is fiscal policy. If you look at the recent communiques, the most important factor that they've stressed is that they want to see more convincing evidence that fiscal policy is going to be tightened. Um, I think there is better agreement now between the finance ministry and the central bank than there has been in the recent past, but I think for them at the central bank they need to see a little bit more evidence um, that it is going to be pretty tight. And I think the budget is still being debated for this year. We don't know exactly what the benchmark oil price is going to be. If it's higher than $70, um, the central bank has said that they may well raise rates. So. Uh, in my opinion, rates will go up by another 100 basis points this year. That will be the top of the cycle, 13. And they'll probably be able to start thinking about cutting um, perhaps as early as the end of this year, but more realistically, 2013. That threat to the economy, though, a lot, of, a lot of comment has also come out. When you're talking about these numbers, they seem mm -hmm. like quite high numbers for inflation to be at when it comes to the economy probably feeling some kind of pain. We're already the um, consumers in Nigeria are feeling the pain. The economy, how do you think that that's going to mm -hmm. play out at these levels? Um, well, it's difficult to say. I mean, evidence we have from other emerging markets that have uh, removed or relaxed fuel subsidies suggests that if you raise petrol prices by 50%, the impact on real household out uh, income excuse me, is about a 5% decline. So I don't think that's dramatic. Um, the impact is not going to go unnoticed. Inflation is high right now, but I think it will come. There is a very good case for it to come down over the next two to three years. So I think it's, it's very much it's a temporary scenario. Um, things will probably appear to get worse in the statistics before they do get better, but I, I think overall they will get better. When it comes to, let's talk a little bit about um, sectors, manufacturing, for instance. Um, that, that is something mm -hmm. that uh, Nigeria wants to grow. We have seen, we've seen things like cement, for instance, mm -hmm. some plants, you know, um, being expanded in the country. When it comes to input cost, though, that has become quite a huge issue. And some manufacturing, especially those that are much smaller players, saying that input costs make it very difficult for them to be able to compete, for them to be able to continue. Now we're seeing food prices also are, are, are um, significantly hit by these numbers and suppliers um, it's going to be much more difficult for them going forward what do you think particularly for the small business person the picture could look like 
Yeah, well, yeah, it's right to separate between large manufacturing concerns, many of which have their own power supplies. They have, you know, they might have gas-fired power plants, for example, and the smaller producers, which do rely on generators. And if you are relying on a generator, agreed, the input cost has risen well by 50% for power. Um, however, if you look at the bigger picture, which is power sector reforms happening, I think that's to me that's the major issue and if, if we can see some progress on that this year then I think there is a case for input costs um, declining over a longer period of time which is much more important than what happens in a single year. Um, in terms of power sector reform we see that you know a new tariff schedule has been released that will allow power producers to, to recover their costs which is the most important thing so I think on the longer term view we are a little bit more optimistic but yes I agree that in the short term input costs especially for smaller businesses will go up.